Hey, this is your boy Cornelius, the real hustler, and I'm here at the Magic Stick in Detroit, and I'm getting ready to interview these guys, a band called Def. Three brothers grew up here, right here in Detroit, and man, they, they set a trail of rock music that was never heard till 35 years later. Nobody was making music like that in 73. Three black brothers from Detroit, Michigan. What were they called? They were Death. called Death. Death. A band called Death. And these guys, they make Detroit proud, I got to say. Oh, hey, you, you guys, welcome. I'm sitting here with Bobby Duncan. How you doing, brother? I'm good. I'm sitting here with Bobby, Bobby Hackney. Hackney Sr. Yes. And Dennis Hackney. Dennis Hackney. Death. How, how did the name come about? We were searching for an identity. I mean, you know, we didn't know whether we wanted to play rock. We didn't know whether we wanted to play funk, jazz, rhythm and blues. So we just kind of mixed the two. That was a time when everything was fusing together. You remember the fusion movement where everything was fusing together? And, of course, you know, when Miles Davis came out with Bitches Brew, you know, that was it. Everybody wanted to fuse everything. Rock was fusing with jazz. Jazz was fusing with blues and, and, and everything else. And... So, you know, I mean, we had that, but, uh, you know, when we immersed ourselves in rock and roll in, in 1973, we needed a, a real good rock and roll name to go with this new sound that we were developing. And uh, David, um, you know, he, he had that concept for death. And when we asked him why death, you know, he said, because death is the door. He says, we can't take the name The Doors because that's already taken. But he was very convinced that Jim Morrison had that same concept. You know, when you he said, look at the lyrics, man. Break on through to the other side. Where's the other side? He said, he's talking about going through the doors. That's why he called himself the doors. That's what, you know, he said, we can't take that name. He says, that's a good name. He says, but death is the door. So we're death. You guys started out young playing these instruments. Did y'all teach yourselves? We learned together. Yes, we did. We learned. No classes or anything? Well, you know, I went to Grinnell's music for a few lessons, but that turned out to be kind of boring, you know? And uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't exciting as it was when I got together with Dennis and David and played. So we all learned together. Yes, we did. We learned together. You did most of the writing. I did most of the lyric writing. Yes, I did. I did most of the writing for the songs. David would come up with these wonderful concepts for the music. Uh, and if David, like, for instance, let the world turn, what influenced David the, David the most about rock and roll? Because see, Dennis had saw Alice Cooper and earlier in our Rock, Fire, Funk Express days, and he told us, he says, man, this is the kind of music we play, want to play. And we kind of reject, we didn't reject him, but we kind of, uh, yeah, that's not, you know, we, we didn't throw it, we threw him out the room, you know, just say, man, you know, we're not dealing with that. And then three months later, the Quadrophenia, tour came and uh you know that was it remember the quad sound how were you guys going to these concerts oh man we was young man we was like i was only 16 <laughs> 17 but anyway when the who came uh pete townsend had the cobo arena rigged up with this quad sound so that was the first time you had speakers way up in the you know i mean in the in the corner of the, of the, the arena we never saw that before and uh, when David saw that, and then David, was that was a real orchestrated album. And David was thoroughly convinced that that's what Jimi Hendrix was talking about right before he died, because he wanted to take his music to the next level of being orchestrated. So when he came to me with this concept about this let the world turn, uh, he said, this is, this is like a mini orchestra. He said, this, this song is like a mini orchestra. It starts off really soft, really subtle. Then it goes into this, you know, all this, this orchestrated type of a thing, and then it just breaks out. And that's what he used to love. David used to call that the breakout. You know, he used to love it when the music breaks out. And, and that's where the hard, fast, and the aggressive edge came from. We never called it punk music. We was just playing hard driving Detroit rock and roll. But David had these great concepts in music, and he would describe to me what the lyrics meant. And, uh, you know, I mean, for instance, in the song... Um, let the world turn, you know. He expressed that to me. He says, this has got to be about that breaking through, about, well, you know, what happens, you know, uh, when, when, when all of a sudden, you know, he says, he says, Bob, when somebody dies, you know, it's an instant, man. He says, he says, God just don't let you linger around here and 
look at loved ones and suffer in an instant. You're in another world. And when I came up with the lyrics, he says, boy, you'll be glad when they let you off. Of course, you won't know really where you've been. He just, he told me, he said, stop, stop, stop. And he started dancing around the room. He said, man, that's it. That's what I'm talking about. And that inspired me to just keep, you know, I always wanted to make sure that I was saying what he was trying to say in his music, you know, so through the lyrics. Bobby is the new addition to the band filling in for your brother, David. How does it feel stepping into the group? Well, it's awesome, honestly. Um, it came out of nowhere, <laughs> so to speak, you know, because we were doing reggae in the beginning. And uh, as a matter of fact, I came to a rehearsal because we had just came off of a little bit mini, you know, tour, did a couple of gigs, and uh, Bobby come down, and he had a very serious look on his face, and he uh, mentioned that he wanted me to, you know, to try out this death pro uh, situation. He gave me the CD, and uh, I was game for it, you know, because I'm always game to play any kind of music. We never knew that anybody would ever have the chance to listen to this music. And, or uh, even care. Or even care. Because it, 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 that's why it really took a while for it to sink into us when everybody told us that the world was loving this music because we're like, wait a minute, this can't be the same music that nobody, that, used to care that, nobody that everybody said we should change and get away from and the, the name and, you know, and all we could say is that David was right, David was right, and I could hear him right now saying, I told you, I told you. Well, we did, we did our first show, the very first show that we played, we did it right here in this room, right here at the Magic Stick, and you can see that in the movie. And that was, uh, that yeah, was, that was with, uh, with Rough Francis, and we're just honored. We're, we're, we're honored that this journey has begun. We don't know how far this journey is going to take us. Only God knows. But we're riding, man, and we're going to ride this train to the station. And whenever the conductor, and that is God himself, says, all off board, that's when we'll be all off board, but until then, we're enjoying the ride. Death, Bobby Duncan, Bobby Hackney Sr., Dennis Hackney. Hey, that's The Real Hustler, and it's been a blast. Lisa, they're playing your music at underground parties here. It's been 34 years since the songs have been heard. It's one of those things that keeps you going to the record store hoping for another great story like that. The ultimate trend, 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 trend. I don't know of a story like that. I don't know of one. <laughs>